to the ladies' department. Oh, I'll come with you. No, darling, no. You go over there. Choose some material. Have a coat made for little Roger, because Roger feels the cold, don't you, Roger? Because you're shivering with every little tummy one. Well, where shall I meet you? I'll come back for you. Where? There. Oh, do concentrate. You're so vague. Oh, yes, of course. I... Are you being served, sir? Uh, no. Are you an assistant? No. <laughs> Actually, I'm in charge of the floor. Oh. <laughs> Well, I must say, it looks very nice. <laughs> Perhaps I should rephrase that. I'm the floor walker. Oh, yes. It's my job to help you find what you're looking for. Oh, well, I'm looking for a made-to-measure coat. Ah, in that case, you'll require the services of our Mr. Tibbs. Are you free, Mr. Tibbs? Uh, not at the moment, Captain Peacock. I must re-nap this halberd. Well, in that case, I'm sure our Mr. Humphreys can help you. Uh, Mr. Humphreys. I'm free. <laughs> Come here, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, the customer would like a coat made to measure. You'll no doubt wish to see some materials. Would you show him a length or two? Well, I'm sure Mr. Lucas and I can find something between us. Would you walk this way, sir? Are you free, Mr. Lucas? <laughs> you just seem to have caught me in the middle of nothing. <laughs> in that case, forward with the swatches. Swatches coming up, Mr. Humphrey. This one is a Scotch swatch. <laughs> this is top quality worsted. We call this the top notch squatch. In fact, we have a whole lot of top notch squatches. No, so what about this? This is pure Irish tweed. This material is actually washed in the waters of the Liffey. Isn't that so, Mr. Luke? Oh, yes, Mr. Rumpies. In fact, when it first arrived, you could still smell the Guinness. <laughs> See how well it goes with Sir's complexion. Oh, it's not for me. Oh, no. No, it's for my friend, Roger. Oh, yes. <laughs> no, that, that wouldn't go with his eyes at all. What coloured eyes has he got? Well, they're very deep brown and they're big, round and soulful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't want rubbish like that, would you? <laughs> How about black velvet? Yes, sir, I, I, I quite like it, but, um, well, for rolling about on the carpet, it does pick up the bits. <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking of, Mr Lucas? <laughs> oh, that's rather fun. Oh, don't you think it would be too bold for the trousers? Oh, he doesn't wear trousers. <laughs> uh, just, just short plastic leggings when it's wet. <laughs> All the people in the village know him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised, are you, Mr. <laughs> you see, he's unbelievably intelligent. He knows just what you want. <laughs> he sounds quite a character. Oh, he is. <laughs> Do you know, many the time I've woken up in the morning and there he is, in the bed with a ball between his teeth. <laughs> Did you choose anything? Oh, yes, this will do fine. Would you care to measure, little Roger? <laughs> I'm just going for a lie down. Take over. <laughs> there we are, madam. Thank you so much for your custom. And if the D cup isn't comfy, do bring it back. We'll see what we can do with the hat stretcher. <laughs> Where was I? You just arrived at the doctor's. Oh, yes. Anyway, the nurse said I'd have to see the locum. Well, when he have sat in the waiting room for an hour, read all the papers and found out that Hitler's just invaded Poland, you don't care who you see. <laughs> well, by this time, it was half past eight and I was fed up. So I went straight in, I stripped off and I lay on the couch. Well, I hadn't been there a minute when this very young man in a white coat came in and he, he sort of ignored me, you know. So I said, come on, I said, I haven't got all night, examine me. And did he? He did. <laughs> he blew on his hands and he gave me a right going over. <laughs> Top to toe. Well, I said, what's the verdict? Is it my kidneys? Was it your kidneys? I never found out. His foreman came in and told him to get back to his painting. <laughs> world. I'm looking for the sunshine. Here we are, Mr. Slocum. Mr. Harmon, the store is open. Stockroom staff are supposed to deliver goods before nine or after five. Captain Peacock, this very expensive model has just arrived direct from the factory. Mr. Rumbold has asked me to bring it up here toot sweet. Now, if this was Star Trek, I would put it on the transporter beam in the cellar. It would dissolve in a lot of light and reappear up here. Unfortunately, Grace Brothers is only sufficiently scientifically advanced for me to use a barrel. Shall I take it down again? No. 
Just leave it there and take yourself down. When we take over, you'll be the first to go. You know that, don't you? <laughs> and what's this, Mr. Harmon? This is a new point-of-sale model for the Flexi Bra. No matter how wayward your figure, Flexi Bra will cling to it and control it like a second skin. Shall I demonstrate? Oh, very well, Mr. Harmon. Gather round, everybody. The Flexi Bra model has arrived. <laughs> there'll be much call for that at Grace Brothers. Oh, I don't know. I could have done with one of them last night at the disco. <laughs> well, I've come across a few in my travels, but it's the first time I've seen them take evasive action. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Mr Harmon should take it back to where from whence it came from. Mrs Logan, if Mr Rumbold wishes us to sell the garment, then I think we must try it out. Uh, ah, excuse me, madam. I wonder if we could interest you in the uh, new flexi-bra. However wayward your figure, the flexi-bra will cling to it and control it. <laughs> I know all about them, thank you. In fact, I wear one. <laughs> and I have the matching pants. you understand how this works, Mr. Grace. It's like your pacemaker. Every time you feel any stress, this little light will flash, like this. <laughs> and you know what to do then? Yes, I know. When I start flashing, I'll call for you. <laughs> That's right. Now, this is the battery for the spare charger, and it plugs in here. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be anything else, Mr. Grace? Uh, no. Uh, send my secretary in. Mr. Rumbold? No, this is Mr. Grace. You've got the wrong number. <laughs> Mr. Grace, this is Mr. Rumbold. Ah, yes, sir. Oh, I'm glad you called. Uh, somebody's trying to get hold of you. I'm going to hang up. <laughs> Mr. Grace, this is me, Mr. Rumbold. It was me the first time. Well, why didn't you say so? <laughs> what? It's about the social club, sir. I've spoken to my department. Uh, they're all jolly keen on the idea, and they all want to join. Ah, yes. Well, uh, my secretary's got the details. Um, she's doing a bit of filing at the moment. <laughs> uh, I'll get it to get them. Miss Bakewell? No, 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 not <laughs> I want the details of the club. Here we are, sir. Ah, yes. Yes, you can have room five. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, may I say we're all very thrilled? Now. <laughs> I cannot agree. I think we all see enough of each other during the day without meeting again after hours. <laughs> I hope they're not going to serve food down there. <laughs> They'll probably have one of those new microwave ovens. You know, roast beef, Yorkshire pud, boiled potatoes and peas. Two minutes flat. Uneatable. <laughs> we had a club down in the basement when I was a junior at Derry and Tom's. I only went once. Was it after it was bombed by the Zeppelins? <laughs> He only sold four pair of Y fronts this morning and he's very bitter. <laughs> Where was I? At Derry and Tom's. In the club. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, you continue to be disrespectful to Mrs. Slocum. You will be sent away from this table and never allowed to eat here again. You will be black bowled. <laughs> Not that as well. <laughs> You're telling us about your club, Mrs. Slocum. Mm, thank you, Captain Peacock. As I was saying, I only went once. It was full of men smoking pipes and swilling beer. Well, I think we should give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> but what are we going to do in this club, anyway? Well, there's, uh, there's usually ping-pong. Uh, even in the desert, we had ping-pong. Ah, that's what made Britain great. Yes, that's true. It took over from bowls, didn't it? 
There was Rommel knocking on the gates of El Alamein and was Captain Peacock worried not a bit of it. He was winning 2012 in Cairo. If it weren't for men like Captain Peacock, where would we be now? Going down to Room Fumpf to play Zipong, Mitzi Ping. <laughs> When I was a Kello youth, I used to belong to a dancing club. Actually, I got quite good at it. We used to do charity concerts, a friend and myself, you know, with a top hat and cane. We used to call ourselves Fred and Ginger. <laughs> I often wonder what's happened to Fred. Let me say here and now that I think it's an admirable opportunity for us to meet socially in a, in a convivial atmosphere. Remove the barriers that separate us on the floor. An atmosphere where it'll be Percival and Shirley and Elizabeth. I think it's a very good idea, Steve. Not until the club opens, Mr. <laughs> we, we ought to have a club tie. It's a good idea, Mr. Tibbs. When I belonged to a bowling club, we had a club tie. It had bowls on it. <laughs> that was very inventive. <laughs> Nobody was allowed into the club without his tie. But girls don't wear ties. Well, you could have club drawers. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Slocum wouldn't be allowed in the club without her drawers. <laughs> it wasn't me, it was him! <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, I'm surprised at you. If I could bring a moment of sanity to this discussion, perhaps we could uh, make a list of all the facilities that we'd like to incorporate. Uh, uh, ladies first. Miss Brahms? Um, I'd like a jukebox. If there is a jukebox, I shall resign. You're not even a member yet. I cannot stand all that high barbary and who do poop poop. <laughs> Neither could Mrs. Thames, especially the jitterbug. Um, that was after the finals at the Hammersmith Pally when he tossed her in the air and missed. <laughs> uh, put down jukebox, question mark. Mrs. Slocum. Well, if I'm to spend an evening in this club, there'll have to be accommodation for my pussy. <laughs> Plus, recreational facilities. What exactly did you have in mind, Mrs. Slogan? Well, a comfy corner with a scratching post. <laughs> and a little area of floor where she can play with her clockwork mouse. Oh, good. I'll bring my Alsatian and he can play with Mrs. Slogan's pussy. <laughs> He hasn't really got an Alsatian. He's just saying these things to aggravate you to get under your skin. Well, judging from the size of her, she must have had a lot of aggravating remarks. <laughs> That's it. You can include me out. No, no, ju just a moment, please. I would like to have a vote here and now that if Mr Lucas is rude once more to Mrs Slocum, that he will not be allowed to join the club. Now, hands up those in favour. Uh, what are we voting for? It's about being rude to Mrs Slocum. Well, I have no objection to that. <laughs> Kelly. Now, Mr. Humphreys, uh, what about you? What would you like to see in the club? Well, I'd like to bring in outsiders. What sort of outsiders? Well, I know lots of people in different walks of life. Yeah, and I've seen some of their different walks. <laughs> <laughs> Could we have a vote about not being rude to me? I'll put down a guest night, Quinny. I think that should cover it. <laughs> Any other suggestions? <laughs> Well, I think we should have a weekly dance and get the girls down from accounts. <laughs> but accounts is in the basement. How do you get them down? Well, it'd be every man for himself, won't it? <laughs> Mr Lucas, before we continue, have you anything to say that will be of any interest whatever to this table? Yes. Well, I'm sure that we'll all be agog with excitement to hear it. Yes, you probably will be. We're all late back for work. It's five past two. No, oh, it's not. <laughs> Five. Have you got the key, dear? Oh, here you are, Mr. Grace. Yeah. Let me. I used to come down here in the, in the war when the sirens sounded. Do you think you made it before they all clear? <laughs> <laughs> this is it, and it's all yours. I should like to say that we're that we're very grateful. Only the words got stuck halfway. <laughs> oh, it's very stuffy in here. Can't we open a window and let some fresh air in? Mrs. Slocum, we're below ground. Well, knock a hole in the wall and let some fresh worms in. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got forced ventilation. Quite right, Miss Brahms. Do it again. I'll take the hat round. 
Mr. Grace, uh, Mr. Grace is, of course, going to have it decorated. You don't need a decorator. You need an excavator. <laughs> when does one think it might be ready? Well, that's, uh, that's hard to tell. We haven't even had an estimate in yet. In the meantime, form your club, draw up your rules, and I'll keep you informed of developments. Oh, just one other thing. I think we ought to signify to Mr. Grace our appreciation of his generosity. Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! Hip, hip! Hooray! <laughs> Mr. Rumbold, sorry, he's delayed with young Mr. Grace. And he said, would the members of the club look through that lot and pick out which ones they would want? It's the stuff they've been trying to get rid of from decorating. <laughs> oh, and while we're on the subject, will the members of packing stockroom and maintenance department be able to avail themselves of the faculties? We haven't made up our minds. Oh, I see. Well, it might help you to come to a decision if I tell you, should the answer be in the negative, you could find yourself a bit short of beer with a bunged-up Carsey. <laughs> How does Tuesday and Thursday suit you? That sounds nicely, brother. Yeah. <laughs> That's rather nice. Oh, I think it's dead common. Well, I will say it's very adventurous. You know, I had a friend once who decorated his room with flower bags. That sounds rather nice. Mm. Trouble was, he had rising damp and it all broke out in biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. It's pure nylon. Oh, I had a nylon carpet in my front hall. And every morning, when I opened the front door to take the milk in, I got a terrible shock. Oh, perhaps that was because you were wearing a woolen dressing gown. It builds up the static, you see. No, it happened even when I wasn't wearing my dressing gown. I expect that gave the milkman a shock. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to the floor, Mrs Tebbs is very hot on linoleum. <laughs> Do you have it in every room? Uh, yes, practically. I'm, uh, I'm sorry about the delay. Some bad news, I'm afraid. Yes, we've just had the estimate in from the decorators. Young Mr. Grace was prepared to go to £300. The lowest quote is £500. £500 just for decorating that one room? We're in the wrong business. Yes, well, anyway, I'm afraid the club is out. Uh, just a minute. Did you say Mr. Grace was willing to go to 300 quid? That's right. Right, I'll do it. You'll do it. Have you any experience, Mr. Lucas? Well, of course I have. I decorated my mother's place, didn't I? Even the landlord had to admit it had changed the value of the property. <laughs> but is it a deal? Hang on, hang on. I'm not standing by while he rakes in 300 quid. I've done some decorating. I'll do half. And I'll do some and all. Well, why don't we all do it? 300 pounds divided by six makes 50 pounds each. What a fantastic spirit there is in my department. I really found the last few minutes most moving. If, if private enterprise such as this were allowed to have its head in Britain today, we could move into the 21st century a proud and strong country whose flag would fly once more in the four corners of the earth. On the other hand, you could say that it's a reflection of the miserable wage we're paid by Grace Brothers which makes us desperate to pick up 50 nicker. going to look like the talk of the town in a couple of days, and then... Here you are. Here's your ladder. Now, we'll start this operation in the finest traditions of the British working man. I'll put a kettle on. <laughs> Maybe, comrade. Well, now, the first thing we must do is uh, get rid of the furniture. Right. Hurry up, everyone. <laughs> Humphreys, you're standing like that again. Like what, Captain Peacock? Like that. W would you believe it? You know I had five rolls of wallpaper under there. <laughs> well, Miss Brahms, you and I will take the desk. We'll leave the bed to the men. Whatever you say, Mrs Slocum. <laughs> just a minute, just a minute. Look, I can't take proper steps. Don't be in such a hurry. Sorry. Right. Stop! Look, it's easy for you. You can take big steps going backwards, but I can only take little steps. All right, then, you go backwards. Right. Come <laughs> <laughs> uh, so along, uh, Mr. Lucas. Mr. Lucas uh, take the mattress. Yeah, right. Roll it over, Mr. Humphrey. Right, there. 
Yeah, I've got it. Have you got it? Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Be careful, Mr. Lucas. All right, leave it to me. Right, I've got it. Oh, well, if you're going to just lie around, I'm going home. I'll have you know these mattresses are very hard to handle. Oh, yes. Come on, Miss Brown. We could do with your help over here, Mr. Lucas. Oh, well, I'm sorry about that, Captain Beagle. Take the bed with me. Take this. Hey! Hey, look at this. Health and efficiency, 1938. <laughs> <laughs> oh, didn't they have their hair cut short? <laughs> oh, look. Let me see. Oh, I say, George, Harry and Bert relax on a quiet beach. <laughs> Must have been a very cold morning. <laughs> <laughs> the boys exercise in the gym. Uh, are they Indian clubs? Not all of them. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, Mr. Humphreys, can we get on? Uh, yes. You take this into the bed with me, Mr. Lucas. Right. Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Thames, that's oh, yes. it. Right. Oh, right. Right. Okay. Out of the door. There we are. That's it. Right. There we are. Two years. Oh. oh, no. Not going to go through, you know. Oh. We'll put it on its side, then. There we are. There we are. Through there. Yeah, come okay. on. Easy. There you are, clean as a whistle. Yeah. Keep going. Stop! Oh. I'm caught in the caster. Oh. <laughs> You'll have to come back, he's casterized himself. <laughs> See, now come round here, Mr. Tebbs. That's it. To you. Right. That's right. <laughs> no, hang on. You'll have to come back again. No, it's no good. It's going wrong. Well, it's over trudging here, you see. Well, it needs no, to well, if you just lift it up. Put it down. Come on, out the way, everybody. Right, Miss Brahms, hop, forward, turn, shuffle. <laughs> We've got a flag, Mr. Harmon. Take that one back. Very good, sir. Now, I suggest that we get ourselves organised into pairs. Now, each pair can put up one piece of wallpaper and we'll finish the job in no time at all. Mm. Now, the first thing we do is measure the paper. How do you know how to match to cut off a roll? Well, we measured that before we bought it. Now, each piece has to be eight foot four inches. Has anybody got a tape measure? Oh, search me. Right. <laughs> If she has got one, it's well hidden. <laughs> uh, my tape measure's in my drawer. Well, just pop up and give it, huh? What, four floors up with the old lips working? I should cook her. <laughs> Besides, I'm mixing the paste. I think I've got the answer to this. Now, this table is exactly six foot long, and my inside leg is 30. <laughs> so, I think six foot, 30. If you cut it about there, we should be right. Ah, oh, well, if I cut it about there, That'll leave us with two inches to play with. <laughs> if you're very careful with those scissors. Are you ready? Yes, I'm holding my breath. Now be careful. <laughs> Clear up! <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> so, Dobby, you gave me a start. You nearly gave me a finish. <laughs> Spoiled it. Quite heavy for that. Now he's turned it over and pasted it. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, it would simplify matters if you turned the same way as Mr. Lucas. To date, you've no evidence that I haven't done that. <laughs> Look, leave it alone. Just in time. Now, be generous with the paste, Mr. Mr. Tebbs. I mean, then we can move the paper on the wall. Don't teach your grandmother how to suck eggs, Captain. <laughs> Why, when I was first married, Mrs. Tebbs and I decorated the whole of our house, from top to bottom. <laughs> You're very thorough, aren't you? <laughs> we spent the whole of our honeymoon stripping off downstairs. <laughs> I dread to think what you were doing upstairs. Take my advice, Mr. Lucas. You'll hold it well away from your body. Mm. Very important to get it right up to the edge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that. Thank you very much, Captain Peacock. Have you done? I think I made a jolly good job of that. Right. Away you go, Mr. Lucas. Right. I'll be out the next piece. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
think I made a bit of a nick in this one. Do try to be more careful, Mr Lucas. And don't worry, it'll do for the bit over the door. Uh, well, never mind. The uh, next piece is almost ready. Well, look, I'll take this. He's so cack-handed. <laughs> right, you get the other end, Mr Humphreys. Right, Mr Don't Susan. let it drop on the floor. We don't want it to get murky. Right, right. Uh, uh, Mr Lucas, uh, give Mrs Slocum a helping hand. Right. Ah! Yeah. Keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> Well, look, don't move. Don't move. Now, I'll take it from the other side. Now, pass it over, Mr Humphrey. Are you sure? Yes, pass it over. Be higher, Mrs Slocum. <laughs> don't worry, Captain Peacock. It'll do for the bit over the door. There's another bit ready, if anyone fancies another adventure. You know, I'm sick of this. You get to the other end. We'll do this. Now, we'll pass it in the back of the steps. Yes. Yeah, so you go around the back. That's about it. There you go! <laughs> Tea, it's on the floor. <laughs> Save that. Do for the bit over the door. <laughs> I'll make the tea. I won't be a tip. You'd be glad at this rate. I should require some more pace. Yeah, more pace, Mr. Tempts. Careless bucket. I'm, I'm sorry. You I, did that deliberately, didn't you? No, I didn't. We were holding a bucket the other Look way. Look at this. Well, I mean, I couldn't. <laughs> You wouldn't, you wouldn't dare. Oh, yes, I would. I believe you would. <laughs> Stop that! Stop that! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at him! He's always so stuck up. Now you look like a clown. Now, Mr. Grace makes this generous gesture, and this is how you repay him. If there are any more incidents of any kind, there will be no club at all. Hands up those who don't want a club. Right, shall we make it final? Yes! yes. Right. Hey. <laughs>